Ah. Oh. Hey everybody, it is Peter here and we are here with day three of the Metabolic Jumpstart. Can you believe that we are halfway into it already? Amazing. So I'm Amazing. here with Sel today. Hey Sel, how are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, Sue's off uh, babysitting her grandkids today, so um, she won't be joining us. So she'll be getting some extra exercise in. And it's one of the topics that we're actually going to talk about on Friday. So looking forward to that. So just waiting for a few people to come on. Here we go. We've got one in so far. Hey, give us a hey-ho. Um, and let us know who it is that has joined us already. Yes. So we're just going to give it a few minutes before we get started today because I don't want anyone to miss out because we've got something special we're going to do first thing this morning. Oh, well, we've got a few more. Hey, hey, hey. How are Hi, you? Hi, everybody. Coming in. They're coming in. So we've got a few more. So we're just waiting before we get started today. I'm just getting myself organized. You can see me today. I can see you today. That's fabulous. <laughs> so hey everybody who's just good morning. Hello Leslie. Oh Leslie, you've you've gone from your workout to your live. <laughs> You're a bit like <laughs> us. I wonder what you did in between. Leslie, tell us what you did in between. I went and got another 5,000 steps in. So <laughs> I, I have this thing that I have to get uh, 10,000 steps in of a morning before I start my day. So, um, and when we're not in the virtual studio, I can just go out and do them all in one go. But when we're in the virtual studio, I have now have got a new routine where what I do is I split it up and uh, I do 5,000 before we start and then I do the other 5,000 afterwards. But today I got more than that. I think I'm sitting at about 12,000 steps. And so my aim is to get 20,000 every day. So that was so. my New Year's. Yeah, so going really well. All right, so we are going to get started because we are talking about stress. And one of the things that I wanted to start this morning off with is um, actually a little stress release. And so I'm going to get everybody. You're probably sitting. So if you are, practice this with me. So sitting in your chair, um, just with your back nice and upright. And I'm just going to hit the play button on my music. Can you hear this, Sel? Yes. Still hear it? Yeah. Okay. All right, ladies. So we're going to practice a little stress release first thing in the morning. So one of the things that I find extremely calming is to have some uh, music going. And this is my favorite album at the moment, which is called Musical Therapy. And I do find it very calming on my soul and a lot of therapy. So we're going to sit just upright in our chair. So really think about a tall spine. And what we're going to do is start at our toes. And I'm going to get you to tense those toes up and then move up through your calves and then up through your legs, into your tummy and up through your whole body. When you get to your hands, I want you to take those fists and I want you to make fists for me and come all the way through, tense up your shoulders. Now we're going to take a nice deep, deep breath in. Hold that breath. And what we're going to do now is a big breath out and release that tension. In the body, let it go. So do it really quickly rather than slowly. So we're going to do it again. So tensing from the toes all the way through the body. As you're doing the tense, do the inhale and hold. So normally we do a slow release of our breath, but when we're doing this tension, what we want to do is release it really quickly. Okay, so here we go, release. Can you feel how your body's starting to relax? We're going to do it one more time. 
big inhale, tension through the body. Holding that breath. And here we go, big blowout. How are you feeling? Give me the thumbs up, let me know. So something as simple as tensing up your body, taking a deep inhale and releasing it can really help your body feel that little bit calmer. How are you feeling, Sal? Good. Good? Did you like that? That was good. Yes. Yes, it is lovely. It is lovely. All right, so I want to tell you a story uh, of a friend of mine um, and she was doing everything right. She's just one of those people who, you know, gets it all going on. And so she was eating right, uh, she was exercising, you know, and um, she was where she wanted to be. You know, she felt happy. Everything was really content in her life. But what happened is her mum got really sick. And so then she ended up taking over this carer's role. And autom automatically, almost immediately, what actually happened was that she, even though she wasn't feeling stressed and she wanted to help her mum, she started to notice how she was increasing in weight, how her tummy felt bloated all the time and nothing she could do seemed to help her out. And it was the fact that she didn't know that she was under stress but she was under stress and her body was telling her that she's under stress. And so that's one of the topics that I really want to talk about to start with this morning. Um, and so I'm just going to flick over and get some of these things out. So some of the things that can stress us out is frequent use of social media, particularly if we're looking at things that are of a negative nature or that they make us feel less than what we actually are. That can certainly have an impact on us. And even though we might not think that it's that bad, if it's something that we constantly do, it's just slowly, you know, drilling into our being and we don't want it to do that. If we're someone who is obsessed over the news, now I'm going to talk about COVID. I think I became very obsessed over the news. I wanted to know everything that was going on. And at one point there, I found myself just, it was just constant. And I went, you know what? I have to pull up on this stuff because it's just become all consuming for me. And I need to live my life rather than being consumed by everything that's happening. And I wanted to be aware but I didn't need it to be consuming. And it was starting to stress me out. I was starting to feel like um, peaky all the time, just that little bit on edge. So how were you feeling when all of that started to unfold? At the beginning it was. It was very, um, very all-consuming. I found myself in front of the TV if there was a COVID update or breaking news on COVID or this was happening and that was happening with with COVID. And I think you get caught up with the whole, what have I got to do next? What's expected? Mm -hmm. My next step, what, you know, with the shops and all that sort of thing. And you're just trying to keep up with all the changes of it all. Yeah, because they're constant. Mm, constant. Yeah, totally, totally. One of the other things is excessive noise. And so if you work in an environment that has this noise, this constant noise going on, we may not be aware that that noise is actually causing stress on our body. Um, and so even something as simple as, you know, having the TV on in the background, for many of us, we'll do that or we'll have that uh, radio playing and, and and, and so those constant noises can actually be drilling into us and causing us stress. The other thing is that 
and I'm going to mention intense exercise. I think we did a bit of intense exercise this morning in the virtual studio. Um, so we really <laughs> ramped it up in there this morning. So there was a little bit of, of intense exercise. Now, you know, there is stress and there's good stress and bad stress. So exercise is one of those examples where it does stress the body into responding and then it goes into the repair mode. So it's really important that you follow your recovery process after you've done a very intense exercise session because if you don't do that, then that stress that was good for your body now becomes a bad stress for your body. All right, food intolerances. Did you know this, Sal? Food intolerances can cause stress on your body. Well, um, I was actually thinking about that this morning. What you eat could have an effect on your body, stress-wise. Oh, totally can. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, they can. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone who's here. Hey, Elizabeth. Thanks for, for chiming in there. Um, high alcohol content intake, um, high caffeine, they actually do put stress on our body as well too. So... You know, check yourself about how many coffees you might be having in the day or how many alcoholic drinks that you might be having of an evening as well too. Um, always being on the phone can cause you stress too. So, you know, think about how you deal with your phone as well too. And do you know another thing that can cause you stress is lack of confidence? Mm hmm <laughs> Mm, so when you're actually feeling like you are less than um, or you're going through like a comparison game to somebody and, and that's just making you feel like you're not good enough, that just wreaks havoc with your confidence. And when you're not feeling confident, that also means that we're now stressing our body out as well too. And so what does stress actually do in our body? It means that we're going to have um, hormones get imbalanced. And one hormone in particular that's going to be going rampant is cortisol. And cortisol, when it goes up, what happens is it causes the thickening of the lining around the belly area. And we like to call this the stress bod. And so even though you might be eating right and you might be drinking all your food, uh, drinking all your, your fluids and you're exercising and you're doing every single thing right, but there's a little bit of stress that is unsuspecting or maybe it, you know about it is causing you to hold on to body fat. What it also does is means that you're wanting more sugary foods, more high fat foods. And of course, you know, those things, they just light up the receptor in our brain that goes, oh, good stuff. And then what happens is we go, I want more and more and more. And so we end up in this cycle. And then before we know it, um, we're now stressed about our weight and our body fat. Um, and so we want to find ways to relieve the stress that we have in our daily life. Okay, so Sal, do you want to run us through some of the ways that we can actually de-stress our body? What we just did, a little bit of yeah. breathing. A little bit of breathing. Yeah. breathing. I'm a big fan of the deep breath. And Peter and I were talking about mm -hmm. this yesterday and I was just, I wanted to go back to what something that she said yesterday because we did have a little bit of a smile at each other. Um, so mm -hmm. Peter did with me yesterday. I did have a little bit of a cry um, because I was feeling a little bit inadequate yesterday and probably over the past few days. Um, don't know why, but I just wasn't feeling like I was doing a good enough job for everybody. Um, and the first thing she said to me was, do your deep breathing. You love your deep breathing. And I, I have spoken about this in our lives so many times. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 
that, that few moments, even 30 seconds a minute of just that inhale and exhale just calms that mind and calms that body down. So what we just did is a wonderful way to de-stress. Mm, mm. And, and look, it, it, it was affecting your confidence, uh, which is one of the things that we were talking about um, this morning as well too. And I know that one of the things that I had you also do, you know, once you got off the phone and we finished the deep breathing stuff, was to go and write a list. What are the things that I'm good at? Okay. Yes. Uh, because we sometimes need to reinforce for ourselves that we are awesome. And so by writing down everything that we're good at, that just reinforces it. And when you look at that list, you go, oh, wow, I am good. I'm great, actually. Yes. Mm, yeah. And their mantra says right. this week, I am everything. <laughs> yeah. I am everything. That's exactly right. So if you're working out with us in the virtual studio, you'll know that that's the name of the workout that we're doing this week. So it's called I am everything. So I, I want to, I decided this is not something that I would normally do um, in the five day metabolic jumpstart challenge, but I decided this morning that I would give you a bonus. And this is something that we would share with our, our insiders, our VIP clients. And so I'm just going to hold it up to see if you can see it. It's called the stress bod. Okay. So I am going to put this guide up in your download access area so that you'll have it because it is a super, super guide about stress and stress on the body and what it actually does so i'm just going to run through some bits and pieces out of this stress guide so what you'll find is that if you are on constant stress you can start to have aches and pains everything might start to hurt in your body you might start to feel that you've got a little bit of brain fog going on you might start to have digestive issues you might find that you get constantly sick or that you want to work out and it just feels totally out of the realm of possibility because you just can't bring yourself to it. And the other thing, the obvious thing, which is struggle with weight. And it can also mean that it will also affect your mood. So now we talk, talked about some unsuspecting factors that might happen or might cause stress in your life but let's talk about those things that are probably more obvious COVID we've already mentioned but when you're in conflict with people that you love and care about that definitely causes stress when you're in a situation where you're worried about your finances all the time that can cause stress when you have <laughs> the endless to-do list. Let's, so when you're just constantly in that work mode and you've just got so many things that you need to do, that can cause stress. If you're someone who's a continuous worrier, so that even the smallest thing that happens, you get inside your head and it just becomes, again, all-consuming and you can't get past that. It just will not go away. All right. We mentioned this one already, which is the overuse of stimulants. So we've talked about alcohol, we've talked about caffeine, those types of things. If you find that you're stressing at work in your work environment is stressful, then that can cause problems as well too. All right, so how do we create some type of stress resistance in our life? So do you want to jump in there? Yes. So you want one great thing is a strong support network. And so as I was just yeah. saying then, you know, it was a phone call to Peter. Peter could tell. So we had a great chat and I hung up the phone and I felt better. I felt so much better. Mm. So having that strong support net, uh, support network around you as well, um, mm. and feeling like you have you you're in control because ultimately you are in control. You are in control. Yeah, we do. 
happening mm. to you. So it's your choice on whether you're going to let it have a negative impact on you, which is the stress and the worry and everything, or whether yeah. you're going to say, you know what, that's not going to matter to me in five years' time, so I'm not going to let it matter to me for five minutes. Yeah, can I jump in on that one, Sal? Yes. The, the, the control factor, yeah. Um, one of the things that we see constantly uh, when people are coming into this group with us, we ask, you know, what's your biggest struggle? And we see a variety of different reasons, and, but I do want to focus on this one thing, which is motivation. So we hear that all the time. I struggle with motivation. Um, I like to call motivation that magical, mystical unicorn because um, it is one of those things that it, it, it comes and it goes. We can be fully charged and engaged and then all of a sudden we come undone from that and we don't feel engaged in what's happening. So when we talk about motivation, the very first thing that you can do for yourself is take control. So take action. And this week is all about action. So, and we keep saying, you know, the mantra that we've got for the metabolic jumpstart is small steps consistently in the right direction have the biggest impact, okay? So anything just as small as it possibly can be, you take that first step. You go, well, okay, I'm just going to put my joggers on. My intention is that I want to do an exercise program but you can't bring yourself to do it because you don't feel motivated. So what's the lowest common thing that you can do? Put on your workout clothes. If you do nothing but sit in your workout clothes for five days consistently, all of a sudden you'll go, oh, hang on a minute. This is just ridiculous. I've been sitting in these clothes for five days. I can actually do something. So it might motivate you to actually go and do something. And I've seen this time and time again. So don't wait for your motivation. Find the action, the smallest, tiniest action that you can control. So take control. All right, so what else have we got? Soothing environments. Time in soothing environments. So take that time out. Take five minutes out to put some meditation music on, music therapy that Peter's just put on, um, to just go and sit in the quiet. Don't have this thought in your mind that if I'm going to meditate, it has to be for 40 minutes and I've got to sit there and go om, om, om in all different poses. That's not <laughs> what meditation is about. Meditation is about bringing everything back into your centre and just focusing in on who you are and just coming back to reality and bringing everything back down. So if it's five minutes sitting out on your front patio with your cup of coffee or your green tea and just listening to the birds, then that's perfect. The other thing is... Mm coping skills and we I was just talking about this deep breathing and so when all COVID was going on and especially on Friday ladies we're in Ipswich and Friday when Queens when Greater Brisbane was having that lockdown and it was seriously crazy town out there because everyone decided that they were going to go and do <laughs> on Friday before the you know the 6 p.m lockdown um and so that was the time where it was okay Deep breathing, yeah, in and out, and just calm down because what everybody was doing wasn't having one iota of effect on me. So if you feel mm. that you get drawn into that, bring it back to that deep breathing because what those people are doing doesn't affect me at all. And Sal, I will just highlight to you that the lovely Elizabeth who joined us this morning said you led a great workout session this morning, Sal. I felt very secure in your coaching. So there you go. It's a little Thank bit of um, reinforcement for you. <laughs> I appreciate your words. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I think also being optimistic in life certainly can help. 
as well when it comes to that level of, of stress. If you're someone who is constantly in that doom and gloom mode, that definitely does bring you down. It also brings everyone around you down as well. Mm -hmm. So as far as stress is concerned, um, really turning inward, as Sel said, is, is a really important factor. And just monitoring how you're feeling uh, throughout the day is a great way to really tune in to uh, the moods that you might be having as well too. Um, it, it can also help you from a, a an eating perspective. So, you know, you might go into a meal feeling like uh, you're a little bit on edge. And so after you eat that meal, you might then feel your tummy is really bloated um, and that's because you've come into that with that level of stress as well. So when you when you become aware of that, then what happens is you know that you just take that deep breath before you go to eat and then eat and that tummy bloating that you experience will probably not be there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so removing stresses from your daily life as much as you can. Um, now, there are certain situations that we will be in that it will be more difficult to remove those stresses um, that we have if you're in a relationship that isn't ideal for you. Then, you know, that's, that's a big step to change that relationship. So it's then a matter of finding what type of coping mechanism am I going to find? So, you know, can I go to my room as an example and sit in my room and um, just listen to some music or do some deep breathing or get into meditation or can I go into yoga? Um, or can I get out in the sunshine and get some fresh air? So there are a lot of different types of things that you can do that will help you relieve stress. I am absolutely obsessed, ladies, and I was talking to my Fit Flexers about this last week. I did a live on it and I shared something with them on how to do this. I'm into Qigong. <laughs> I've gone into the ancient Chinese thing. And so it is all just about connecting to your energies in your body. Um, and I like to think of this as a moving meditation. And so you can do a Qigong that's five minutes or you can do one that's half an hour or even longer. And you really feel like you are a powerhouse afterwards because you have connected into that energy flow that you have. Sal, what other tips have you got in regards to things that will help us relieve our stress? So we've got yeah. meditation, breathing, yoga. Journaling, yeah. of course. Yeah. Journaling, yeah, yeah absolutely. Write it down, write it down. Now I have a friend of mine, daughters at the moment who's going through a few struggles and I was talking to her on the weekend and one one thing Peter and I did Gabby Bernstein's uh, med meditation challenge mm -hmm. last year and one of the ones that she did was what was called rage on a page yeah <laughs> it is brilliant ladies and it's all about mm. getting all those emotions out of here and writing it on your page now it can be mm. anything if you just want to fill your journal with swear words do it but do it for a certain <laughs> amount of time so it could be five you know five minutes could be 10 minutes yeah. could be 15 minutes and have some really powerful meditation music on at the end what i will say about journaling i know peter journals every single night um mm. and it's so good to get what has happened out, what has happened on the day out of that body into a book mm. Um, mm. and you're just closing that book and going to bed and yeah. relax. Yeah. 
Yeah. Also, what I will add to journaling is that always finish on something positive. So look for something that has happened during the course of the day that you can write in that journal that um, allows you to, um, yeah, be in that positive framework before you hit the pillow. Uh, when you hit that pillow, just really take, again, that nice deep breath, look up to the sky, sky you know, although you can't see it, but imagine that sky and just say that thing that you're grateful for for the day because that is certainly going to help from a sleep perspective and we're going to talk about sleep um, tomorrow as well too. You know, and so just daydreaming. Yeah, sorry, sorry, go on. I was going to say it doesn't have to be, don't look for anything big in your day. It could just be that you heard a kookaburra laugh or, you know, mm. outside office windows my neighbor has some gorgeous flowers that I get to see every morning and the color is just amazing so it can be as some something as simple as that that you're grateful for from your day oh, what a brilliant idea let's get everybody to take a photo of what they see outside their window yes and post it in the group okay so there's your challenge ladies post below and take a photo of what you see outside your window and uh, share it here in the group. That would be awesome. So look at the view that you actually have. And that actually leads beautifully into what I was going to say. Just having a cup of tea and sitting and daydreaming, Sal. Yes. Putting your feet on the grass. <laughs> yes. That definitely works. You know, um, candles, beautiful um, scents can really help. Um, as well too I'm a big candle fan um, having a warm bath I can't have a warm bath because we have limited water here I can't have a bath you know I have limited showers as well too so we're very restricted as far as water is concerned um, gardening gardening can be very therapeutic as well too yes any um, other ideas from you Take yourself out of your environment. So if you're living in the city, go to the country. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you are inland, go to the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just sit for an hour, sit for two hours, walk along the beach, whatever float, you know, whatever is going to make you feel better. But just take yourself out of that environment if you can in our current situation. But, yeah. Do you know one of the things that when you become very in tune with how your body is feeling and reacting, I know for me, if I'm sitting here at my desk and I am then trying to get something done, when I'm starting to feel that stress, I will feel this great overwhelm in my body that it's time to move. You know, I will start to get very antsy in my pants. So yeah. I'll start to move around, you know, and I'll sit in different ways. And, and then I go, what are you doing? Just get up. Just get up and go outside. Um, and I'm, I'm very blessed because I live in the country so I can go outside and I can sit. Well, sometimes I just lay on the grass and uh, stare up at the clouds. So um, but anything that you can change your environment it might not be as luxurious as that but I know that Pat has shared this with me now Pat is an RN um, and so she has been going through quite a lot of stress in regards to um, COVID and she said and she's trying to support some of the younger nurses coming through and she said they're really not coping very well and she said and then they're not coping very well so that's now having an impact on me and she said you know that area at the hospital where you can just go out from the ward I'm in and I said yeah she said I just you could see the sky from there she said I just go and look at the sky and I said that's perfect she said I feel that little bit of sunshine and I look at the sky and I mean I that's my happy place I the, my, that's my land of plenty the the sky and nature it is just it just lightens me up from from within so and you can find whatever it is that works for you you know, so find your happy place. Definitely find your happy place. Um, something simple like writing or and, and sending a letter to someone. Yeah. 
um, or, you know, sending them a gift so it's something unexpected. Those types of things not only make somebody else feel good, but they also make you feel good about the fact that you've done it as well too. They're all types of things that you can do that help relieve the stress on your body. Any others that you've got? I was going to add in um, when you said write a letter, send a postcard. So if you've got friends overseas at the moment oh, yeah. um, that could be in lockdown, I know, you know, UK are in strict lock lockdowns at yeah. the moment. So if you do have friends over there, send them a postcard from where you are. Even um, just so to brighten their day and to make you feel better. You've done something good for your friend. Totally. I love that because um, yesterday when I checked my mailbox, I had a gift in my mailbox. The Get yes. It Done 90 Day Day Planner all the way from the UK. And yes. so each month, I will read this to you, each month it has a little quote before you go into the month. And the first one is embrace the fear and leave regret for some other sucker. <laughs> <laughs> So the person who sent me the book wrote that because this is her personally designed book. Uh, compete with yourself, collaborate with others. That's one of hers as well too. And then third month, I didn't go to Harvard, but the people who worked for me did. And that was 50 cents who said that, the rapper, if you're wondering who 50 cents is. So yeah, and that really did put a big smile on my face, getting a gift in the mail. It was like, oh, wow, I love that so much. And I used to get very hung up when I'd get, get gorgeous gifts like this and I'd go, oh, I'll just keep that. I'll just store that away. You know, I don't want to write on it. It's so pretty. Now I don't care. I just write in things. <laughs> so yes. because that's what they're there for. It's like the, the uh, you know, the good china. Do you, you know, in the day we used to have glory boxes, you know, where, you know, growing up as a teenager you'd have little things in there and you'd have your, your dinner set and your tea set and your, your linen people would give you and, and all those types of things. And then I look at my dinner set um, and it's beautiful and uh, we use it. We now use it every day, just like now we don't drink wine, but we use our beautiful wine glasses for our smoothies. So, <laughs> so very weird. But, you know, it's don't leave the good stuff for the day that it might get used, you know, once in a blue moon. Use it every day. Every day is special and you are special. So, and you deserve those use of those special things in your life as well too. So, so one, of our, um, one of our watchers just put up there, I'm not sure who it is because they didn't put a name, but they said when we were in lockdown first up, I sent my granddaughters paper cutouts, uh, hugs and kisses. Just that is so that gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I do love that. Um, one of the ladies actually told me, um, that one of the young children, the two little girls around their neighbourhood, they actually sat and drew pictures every day and then they went to the uh, ladies around, at, around that neighbourhood that they knew that were by themselves and put these little pictures that they drew oh. in their mailbox. Now, Lindy told me about that, and I thought that was just so, so special. Brilliant. And, you know, yeah. after after we were able to come out of that lockdown situation, um, she said she was walking up the street one day and she saw this little girl, these two little girls putting something in her mailbox, and she went over and, she, you know, she said to them, that just made my day, you know, seeing these little pictures that you were drawing for me. So kids have a beautiful um, way of expressing themselves, and I think what happens with us, you know, is that self-expression we hide so much um, because we feel that we're not able to show that as well too. And it was Alison who said that. Thank you for sharing that, Alison. That is lovely. We love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sal, so anything that you want to wrap up 
on as far as stress is concerned. Otherwise, I will do my wrap up. Um, just check yourself throughout the day on how you're feeling. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So a lot of, sometimes, you know, people say, how are you doing? And our automatic response is, I'm okay. And you may very yeah. not, very well not be okay. So if you're not okay, just check, find out, you know, is it physical that I'm feeling stressed or is it my mind that I'm feeling stressed? What's my mm. surroundings? How are they affecting me? So just check yourself throughout yeah. the day and even write it down. Yeah, I, I think writing it down, you become more in tune with it as well too. So, yeah. so ladies, stress can come in all shapes and sizes, um, but constant stress in our life can definitely have an impact on our metabolism and how our body is responding so we really need to get our stress under control so look for the obvious stress factors but also look for the not so obvious stress factors which we talked about today so try and be mindful try to honor yourself and connect with yourself um, exercise is a great stress release and make sure you get that deep breathing done. So what we want you to do today is to share with us what your self-care tip is. What is the thing that you do every single day to honour yourself? I like to call this my self-shine time. Um, I am writing a book about, <laughs> and I think I mentioned this yesterday as well too, and my book is all about um, shining from within outwards and um, how that can impact our, our health and our well-being as well. So stay tuned. I'll let you know when it comes out. Um, but, yes, so your actions today are to take a photo of what you're seeing outside your window. We want to see that. Okay, and then we want you to share what your daily practice is that is just for you. What is that thing that feeds your soul and lowers your stress? Okay, so we want to we want to hear it, we want to see it. So that's it for us today. We will be back tomorrow, day four. We're halfway. Oh my goodness, I'm starting to get sad. Um we are moving into sleep. One of my favourite topics is sleep um, and I'm sure that everyone will enjoy it and I'm sure that there are a lot of ladies out there who are struggling with sleep um, and it just seems to be something that hits us in that menopause years as well too. Oh, we've got a love. Thank you. We love you too. Thank really good you. session today. Really enjoyed it. You two ladies are doing a great job. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, Thank Leslie. You, Leslie. We love you too. <laughs> all right ladies that's over and out from us and we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m although remember the q a post pinned at the top put your questions up there because i will be on later on to do uh, a live q a so make it easy for me put it on the q a post so that i don't have to go looking for them Thank you, ladies, and take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Sal. See you soon. Bye, Bye ladies. Have a great day. Bye. See ya.